This was our very first run with the Wyroll Light Cable Cam. We thought we had it down, but we probably should have practiced. Because we totally smashed it to pieces. What's up, Bikemore fans? So we're always trying to bring you guys better and better action videos and review videos. And to do that, we've acquired a few toys. The latest is the Wyroll Light Cable Cam. This little guy right here. You run a cable through and it can drive back and forth across the cable, allowing you to get some really cool angles that you just can't do with somebody standing in the woods or along the side of the road, or even with a drone, because you can run it through some really tight places. So this has allowed us to capture a few cool things on some of our more recent Where to Ride videos and product reviews. Let's show you how it works. The Wyro Light kit includes the cable cam, remote, charger, battery, and two cable end stops, plus a 50 meter yellow cable to run it on with a quick reel system that works really, really well. We upgraded to the 100 meter one, which comes in a black cable, and added a few things that we needed, like a quarter 20 GoPro mount to add our camera on, and we have a smartphone mount too that sort of acts as a balance. To attach it, you simply wrap one end around the tree and carabiner it to the cable, walk along the path you want with the quick reel thing open, and when you get to where you want, you lock it into place, and then attach the adjustable strap to the other end of wherever you're trying to run it to. This allows you to hook it to back to the cable system, which is now locked closed, and then tighten the strap to create a taut line. This is super important because the weight of the cable cam system will drag it down a little bit. From there, you install these cable stop ends, and what these do is will knock the little wheels off if it hits it, if it goes too far, and that prevents it from just smashing into the tree or pole or whatever you mounted it to. Loop those to the cable, put it into the little locking pin, attach whatever camera mount you're going to use, attach your GoPro or whatever you want to run. It can handle a small DSLR or point and shoot camera, as well as your phone. The included quarter 20 mount has a ball joint that lets you adjust the angle because the weight of the camera is going to cause this to hang not straight, so this allows you to get the camera angle straight. Then we just attach the battery, put the case back together, hit the on button, turn the remote on, and you are ready to drive it. We recommend a little bit of practice. The system has two speeds. This is slow, which is great for practicing the moving and kind of getting used to the timing because the fast is really fast. It comes color coded with a yellow stripe on one arm and no striping on the other arm. That corresponds to the digital end stop buttons on the remote that lets you set a digital endpoint that the system will remember those help it stop in advance of the little cable stops that go onto the rope, but then you have those as a backup safety system. Here's why we recommend practicing. It's pretty tricky to get the timing just right. As you can see, it's really easy to shoot way far ahead of the rider or fall behind. Getting the timing just right definitely takes practice. In fact, this is what's going to take the most time when you're out on the trail. Setup's pretty quick and easy, assuming you have a clear line of sight between whatever you're trying to run through. It took a little bit of practice to be able to get the timing just right to follow our friends along through the trails. You can see that abrupt stop at the end where it kind of hit the bump stop. And there, where it hit the stop and went off the cable. This is good though because it kept it from smashing into the tree. It's still on there. The Wyro Light base kit retails for $3.99. As you saw it in our review with the longer cable, the carrying case, and some of the other mounts, it's going to go up a little bit from there. They also have an extra battery. We were messing around with it sometimes for about an hour or so in the woods and never really even came close to draining the battery. And the remote just uses a couple of standard AAAs, but the uh, options are there if you think you're gonna need it longer. Now, about the cable length, we pretty much just bring the 100 meter with us because there's no real point in bringing the shorter one and the longer one. You can't combine them to get a longer cable and you might as well carry the longest one with you. We've really only ever used probably about half of it and at about a 50 meter length, we're getting maybe around four feet of sag in the middle and it's really, really tough to get the straps tight enough to soak that all the way up. 
So with that in mind, you need to be able to run the cables high enough up in a tree, and sometimes that's a little bit tricky. So just be prepared to like, if you're really going for a pro level shot, you might want to bring a small step ladder out in the woods or climb some trees to get it high enough. The other thing you might've noticed is all of our bags and bikes and even the remote operator laying around on the side of the trail. That's the tricky part with using this, is the person remote working it needs to really be way off to the side which makes it a little bit difficult to see the camera operating and where it is on the line. The line isn't so bad in that you don't really want to see that and it barely shows up in the videos, but the camera slide itself we think should be painted bright orange or have a little orange flag hanging from it. And as you saw at the very beginning, we totally smashed this thing up against my friend Merritt's helmet. Fortunately, it hit the side of the helmet and didn't really do any damage to him, but it shattered the whole plastic case on the bottom part. We were able to electrical tape it together to keep using it for that run, but Waterlight did send us a replacement so we could uh, finish the review up with a fully functioning unit. Actually, I say fully functioning. That broken one worked great, it just looked bad and you had to kind of leave the battery taped inside to charge it up. So the cool thing is, even if you do smash the case, the electronics and everything seem totally fine because chances are you're probably gonna hit it. We were running it super close between some trees and you know if the wind picks up while you're out there, there's a chance it could sway and it could end up hitting something if you're trying to get like a really, really tight shot through whatever obstacles there are in your way. But um, overall, this has become a pretty cool tool for us in our arsenal of shooting more interesting videos. We don't take it out on every shoot. We also have a drone and you know, the GoPro stabilization, you can run along with some stuff. But there's simply no way to recreate what this thing can do without a cable cam. And as far as cable cams go, this one's super affordable, super user friendly. The only other thing I'd mention is that there's no way to operate it on your own. So you do need a buddy out with you in the woods to help film. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and hit like and subscribe on this video and check out some of our other reviews to see more cool stuff from bikerumor.com.